From the School of Public Health, please welcome Rose Morpiko with Walkability, the Built Environment and Mental Health. Shakespeare once wrote, what is the city but the people? What I take this to mean is that not only do we build and shape these vast and constantly expanding cities, but the cities themselves also help to build and shape us as people. My master's thesis is about understanding how the built environment, which includes things like streets, transportation networks and parks, impact our mental health. This is an area of great significance because according to the World Health Organization, mental illness accounts for 15% of the total burden of disease in the developed world. In New Zealand, one in six adults has been diagnosed with a common mental disorder at some point in their lives. With more than half of the world's population now living in cities, and this trend rapidly accelerating, it's becoming more and more important that we explore how we live, work, and play impacts our mental health. And so, you're probably wondering, how does the built environment impact mental health? Well, indirectly, the built environment can impact mental health by altering thought and behavior processes or social factors. This includes things such as stress, fatigue, and isolation. So the aim of my research is to develop an index made up of various elements of the built environment this index will explore how walkable our neighborhoods are. Okay, you're probably wondering, what does walking have to do with mental health? Well, international studies have shown that more walkable neighborhoods will actually reduce stress, reduce fatigue, and reduce isolation. So my hypothesis is that more walkable New Zealand neighborhoods will have lower rates of people suffering from mental health conditions. So as I said, my index will be made up of various things in the built environment. Here are three examples. Access to green space. This provides restoration from stress and fatigue, making you feel relaxed, comfortable, and at ease. Secondly, wider sidewalks. They make you feel safe and less vulnerable, and so you're more likely to go walking. This increases the number of social interactions you have in your neighborhood, reducing isolation, creating a greater sense of community. And lastly, a wider variety of services. This reduces trip distances, creates wider visual variety and interest, making walking more attractive. And so by combining these elements to create an index, we can visualize the variability and walkability in our cities. And so I'll end with this question. Is your neighborhood walkable? If not, why? Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Well, the topic that is absolutely at the forefront of, of urban and suburban design at the moment, judges. Well, thank you very much, Rose, for yet another example of students of the university addressing real-life problems. And I think everybody sitting in this room here tonight knows that our mental health services are in a rather depressing state, I might add. <laughs> but the causes of that mental health problem that many of our citizens are experiencing is not fully known. And you have brought to it an optic that I found rather intriguing. You were right talking about the, the space that shapes the way we think and feel about what we do. Uh, my neighbourhood is workable, but I spend most of my time on the treadmill. Maybe I should drop doing that. <laughs> You've got a very interesting piece of work here, and I sincerely hope that it progresses with an index that might have replication possibilities that will help us better understand how we can deal with this very serious problem. So thank you very much indeed. Um, I hope my colleague does more than take his treadmill out into the footpaths. <laughs> um, I, I, I was really attracted to your presentation, uh, quoting Shakespeare, that there's a nice literature, literature quality, literature quality to it. Uh, and uh, that was a great bookend to your challenge at the end. So I really like that you posed the challenge to us, uh, rather than just stating the thesis. Um, it's really interesting that it's such a simple idea of walking and mobility. Uh, you know, the challenge to make it attractive and to um, make it bring about the interaction you're talking about. It's, it's a relatively straightforward exercise um, to do and 
pardon the pun, but, <laughs> um, and, um, but I think you just, you just left it as a, as a mighty challenge to us. And, and I endorse what Graham said about um, the impact on mental well-being, which is fundamental <laughs> to our overall well-being. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause for Rose Morpico.